EMF stands for Emulation Framework. It aims to significantly lower the barrier to entry for emulation developers and would-be emulation developers by adopting a low-code approach. It exists in two parts. The first is the EMF Builder application, which takes an XML specification of a computer system, with descriptions of the CPU, memory, I.O., and so on, and translates it into source code. It is essentially a DSL, a domain-specific language, that generates code for an emulator, as well as an assembler and disassembler, all from the same original file. The second part consists of utility methods and interface routines that tie all the auto-generated code together and provides common functionality across all emulators built with the EMF system. This includes import and export routines, debuggers, and timing control modules. The most obvious benefit of EMF is that the EMF Builder is able to generate the three main tools directly from a single description. This saves a lot of tedious error-prone work since the emulator, assembler and disassembler all use elements from a single CPU description. This means you can be sure there is no mismatch between what the emulator is running compared to what the disassembly debugger is showing you compared to what the assembler generated in the first place. It also allows new tools, like instruction profilers, to be auto-generated later. Such tools would then be available to all emulators in the EMF family, simply by rerunning the builder program. Although all the examples running on this website are naturally based around JavaScript, the EMF builder takes the XML file and builds an internal representation of the machine. It then uses that representation to build the source code in the target language. Of course, there's no reason why the target language couldn't be assembler, including the assembler of another retro machine. So you could make an Amiga emulator on the ZX81, for example. But I leave that as an exercise for the viewer. Because you don't write the emulation code directly, you can cause the builder to modify its output to suit the project. This is much the same as you might choose to run your compiler as either optimised for speed or optimised for size. For example, most emulator implementations feature a large switch statement that handles each separate opcode. If your language supports an efficient callback system, then each opcode could be implemented as a simple function. In this way, your emulator only needs to invoke the correct callback at each step. Individual parts of the CPU can be optimised in a similar way. Take the condition flags, for example. Depending on the CPU and how the software uses them, it might be better to implement them as a single variable, or many. Again, one switch allows the builder to convert the original CPU description into the best language-specific code across the whole project. This applies to all other parts of the system such as the memory module. In its original form, the JavaScript version of EMF implemented memory as an array, but this can be switched to use the more modern and efficient typed arrays, or changed entirely so that the code it builds gives every memory location its own specific function. This is available already with automatic hooks that initiate a callback whenever a given address is accessed, which is used extensively for handling memory mapped I.O. In most emulated systems, there is a ROM, or block of software, which remains unchanged throughout the program's run. So instead of generating the emulator code like this, which handles dynamic changes, it can instead write the logic directly in line. Now, while the JavaScript version won't give you much of a speed increase, a natively compiled version very much will. And because you don't have to manually write the code, you can let the EMF builder adding specific checks which look for self-modifying code in only those places you think you'll need it. After testing the new version, you can then remove those checks everywhere else. Also, you can improve the emulator code by injecting native code into the main loop, so that machine-specific ROM calls use your newly improved version for greater speed or control. Furthermore, it's a modular system, so once you have a Z80 core, for example, every Z80-based computer 
can be emulated by simply supplying a custom video driver for that machine. Because EMF is a framework with known API boundaries, every driver in the system could be used with any other. And finally, because the implementation has a method of mimicking the hardware with direct control over the data and address buses, you can try disabling a single RAM chip or breaking a single track, for example, just to see how the real hardware would react to adverse conditions, which might help fix the odd old computer. I hope that this video has given you an idea for the scope of EMF. In future videos, we'll look more deeply at how it works. Examining the process by taking a single description and building it up to emulate a complete machine. Also, we'll be looking at how EMF supports the development of retro remakes, including real-time online games, and a breakdown of all the features of the EMF library, such as its debugger, exporter, and sound module. Until then, it's bye for now.